Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another tank that once again puts the optional mod Tank Track over vanilla wheels to very good use, as you can see right behind me. Yes, this thing that I'm currently standing in front of is called the VEA1 Mokari Main Battle Tank, which is this lovely thing over here. So this is a very large tank where the main gun on this is two assault cannons and two auto cannons all strapped together and they all fire at the same time. But it also comes with decorative assault cannons, as you see at the back here, there is a small antenna. Right next to it, we've got some neon tubes that go all the way up to that blue colouring. But yes, this is the first time I've ever seen someone using a gun as a decorative piece. All the way over to here, I believe what I'm going to do now is just do a quick demonstration of what this thing can do, because it's very impressive, because it's got a whole suspension system built into it. So grab hold my character, all the way up to here, below the barrel, we're going to have this little section right here, which is an access panel, where we can close it up, make it look nice and neat, or open up and access a cockpit right behind it. In the first person view, this is all we can see. And of course, while the access panels are non-collision, there's no worry about actually closing them up behind you, because the turret will just phase straight through it. No, with free camera once again, we're going to look at it like so. There we are. We're going to hide the HUD, and now I'm going to press number one. What's going to happen here is the tank's going to go from its standby mode, which was in right now, and it's going to go into its main active mode, where the middle body lifts up, the suspension kicks in, so we were to drive it around, the middle section will wobble around and act all stable. We've of course got some other controls on this thing, such as a maintenance mode. We're pressing that. It's now going to lift up even further. So hopping out of this once again, all the way down, we can now easily walk underneath this thing and repair it up if it ever took damage from any kind of lumps and bumps, like say driving into a random rock, or maybe took a hard landing and some of these blocks took damage. Yes, it also allows us to play around with these. There we go. And of course, we can access the connector and while well, the reactor's under there. But no, there's more stuff we can do with this. So all the way up to here, inside. There we go. You now press number five. This is put back to its standby mode and considered its main mode to actually blast your enemies with. We also got number six, which is a sniper mode, but it's been labeled as a failure and it doesn't currently do anything, so I'm not too sure what it's actually meant to do at the end of the day. But no, we can always turn the lights on and off. We can undo that. Press number two, take over the gun. Back in the third person view, looking at like so. There we go. We spin this all the way around, a full 360 all the way around. Or while it's getting that access panel will not interfere with this, we just spin it all the way around like so. And then once we're ready, we now just left mouse button, and there we go. We've got our assault cannons, all the cannons, all firing on one button press. Anyway, back it goes. Down we go. And I'm just going to lock that in place for now. So hopping out of this, and coming over to tab number two, we then got some more options to go through. So back in the free camera, all the way over to here, we're now going to look at this section right here. So we've got this searchlight right there, and it appears the vehicle is moving, so let's go and do that. There we go. And yes, what I'm going to do now is press number seven, because what that's going to do is now lift up the searchlight very, very quickly. Look at that go up and down. It's quite violent, actually. Yes, we now press number six, hop into this, and I'll get a good gander what's going on all the way around us without needing to use the turret and without needing to turn the turret all the way around. Of course, I lift this up and down if you want to do that. So there we go, up we go, and there is that. Yes, now what I'm going to do is come over to number one, press that all the way down to the ground. That should hopefully stop it from moving. I might need to realign this thing. There we go, that'll do, that should keep it nice and stable. And now we're going to come around towards, I suppose we'll come around to here, press F10 before I forget to do that, find it in spawn menu. So here it is, here's the name, hopefully I'm saying that correctly, I'll just simply call it V5A1 from now on. But this is 2,907 small blocks using a bunch of the DLC packs. We see up to here a small overview about it, and of course all this height, width and mass. Down to here we see its armaments, so we've got two assault cannons, two auto cannons, one assault cannon turret, one auto cannon turret and it's got a mixture of light and heavy armor. Down there is the summary, which you can review at your own leisure. But for now, I'm going to give this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a look around the outside, then go around to controls once again, drive around for a bit, maybe just blow up some space wires nearby. So for the very front of this thing, move the sunlight back around a little bit, that'll look quite nicey. This is what we get. Where, as you can see, we've got a bunch of grey steel blocks with a bit of red and a bit of blue and a bit of black dotted around everywhere. Moving it closer over to the main body, we've got some neon tubes coming all around this corner, adding a small little handle for you to grab hold of and pretend to pop up and get into that access panel, get inside the cockpit. We've got some floodlights on the left and right hand side to light the area. The node here, we've got ourselves a column with a neon tube on top of it. We see how there blast the edge blocks, we're pushing all the way through. And there we go with our gyroscopes. And we're coming across over to one of these wheels, could be the same on both sides, we're we'll only looking at this one. Yes, we've got ourselves lights at the top, lights on the side, and over here is all of our wheels. But once again, the optional mod, which you do not need to have. It's fully animated, looks fantastic, and just highly recommend trying it out and just attaching it onto any old wheels you find in your world. Just glorious little mod. 
and I can't recommend it enough. But no, round on the side of the thing, turning on my lines, here we go. So this is what we get, a bunch of steel blocks, an LCD screen with a little logo. All the way across here we see all of our wheels to keep this thing going, which do very great against rocket turrets, as you saw from the previous video, but I do like to go for the wheels. Anyway, over here is a bunch of unfinished blocks, that just a little ladder to go all the way up to here, so you can get on top of this thing, and perhaps grab hold of that neon tube to pull yourself up. Anyway, up to here we see another LCD screen with some lettering on there in a red colouring. Come back to the turret a bit later on, but we'll just go around the bottom of this before we do that. Anyway, towards the back of the base, here we go, we've got some barred windows where you see inside here, a little medical kit place to, well, store your medical kits inside. Up to there's a little hinge for you to attach something onto if you want to do that. Use this way to actually connect this vehicle up to something and recharge it. Entirely up to you. Yes, round towards the back. Looking at it like so. We've then got some more lights. Over to here we've got some atmospheric thrusters to help boost this thing forwards. Help give it a nice kick of speed. We need to do to get that all away from our enemies. Up to there's a small connector to actually dock it up and recharge it up if you want to use that hinge on each side. We then see more barred windows. We then see exhaust behind that shooting out a bunch of smoke. Over here we see even more of our little red lettering LCD screens. And then down here what we've got is a license plate which says Born the Goon. Anyway moving all the way up. And looking at the turret. So yes behind here what we've got is a bunch of hydrogen engines to give it a nice bit of power. Up to here behind our turret we've then got a bunch of spare wheels. Very good stuff if you're planning to lose a few wheels. And of course over to this section here are two decorative assault cannons. Got the neon troops right behind them. But yes, this is the first time I've ever seen anyone ever use weapons as a decorative piece. But I suppose you could use these as an actual weapon if you did want to do that. And perhaps use it to shoot down any kind of drones trying to chase you. But God knows how you actually aim towards them. Anyway, there we go with our turrets. So we've got our assault cannon turret and our auto cannon turret. Over here we've got a fake little radar dish made out of our radar dish. Access panels right next to it. A little half block with a piston cap on top. Over here we see a bunch of containers that go across to a bunch of conveyors go along towards the front. There's another access panel, there's another neon tube that goes around towards our main barrel. Then up to there is our little searchlight to actually look around there on its piston. Moving up and looking down. There we are for the very back. And there we are the very front of the barrel. So we can see a wheel suspension right there. We see our little top mount camera to actually precisely aim our gun. Then around towards the very front of this thing, all the way around. So there we have got a side camera, a light, steel blocks. Over there we've got some cylinders. Over here is auto cannon. Into the middle we see the back part assault cannons. And around over this side, a little floodlight. Up to here, an LCD screen in the blue colouring that just says online backwards. And then over on this side, a little light, a little camera. And then coming back over to this section, here we go. So behind this camera, there's a little access panel to go inside. And all the way down inside it, there we are. So putting on my lights, looking around here. And there we are on the inside. There's a cockpit we'll be seeing right behind there, but here's a good look how all the government's on the inside. So we see gyroscopes, we see how all the conveyors are being connected up. There's a warfare battery. And I believe that is pretty much it for the inside. So pulling away from here, here we go, all the way down underneath this thing. There we are, so we see the bottom of our wheels, how they're being connected up. And over here we see the bottom of a battery, across to here. There's our gyroscopes, there's our connector, there's a warning sign. Then over there's a large reactor. And there we are at the very back for access panels. And with that, I believe that is a brief look around the outside of the VEA1 Mokari main battle tank. And looks bloody fantastic how it has been set up. I should have retracted that piston to make it look even better. But no, it's absolutely glorious how it's been set up. A lot of detail has been put into this stuff. And that's why I do love more block designs. But anyway, grab a hold of my character over to here. Now what we're going to do is put that all the way down. There we go. Now we're going to go through all the controls. So read down the camera. Here we go. Pressing number one. What's that going to do is activate our main mode. We raise up the middle, so we were to drive this thing around. What's going to happen is the middle will be nice and stable and allow you to aim nice and proper. So looking around here, and there we are. It doesn't feel like it's wobbling at all. But when we look at it like so, it's wobbling a fair bit. Putting on the brakes. There we are. We've got number one to take over the gun and actually fire it. We've got number three for our top mount camera. We're sitting right next to the barrel of our gun. Then we've got number four, number five, number six for our different modes. Once again, number four is for your maintenance mode to lift it all the way up to access underneath the main body. Then number five is to put it back to its main mode to actually go and start blasting your enemies. Number six is a sniper mode, which is currently labeled as a fader. There we go. Then we've got number seven for your lights at the front to turn them on and off. And of course, number eight and number nine could be to control the gun. So when we take over it, we now spin it around and lift it up and down. There we go, we're aiming that tree. And there we go, the tree is now being destroyed and flying off into the distance. And you're looking out once again. Over to here, tab number two, we've got our hydrogen tank to stop on and off, our reactors on and off, batteries to auto recharge, antenna on and off, 
search rate to turn on off and of course you view the camera so into here there we go lift up lift down and spin it all the way around now that we've got number eight for our turrets to turn them on and off and then number nine is a very useful one which is going to be to attach wheels onto this thing so they've got blown off you press that and hopefully weld it all up and back into working order using one of the spare ones at the very back of the turrets on the tandem of three four five six seven eight and nine we've got nothing else so now it's time to drive this thing around first of all relying this there we are, that'll do quite nicely. Hopping out of that, yep, that's just about straight. And now we're going to go all the way forwards into the distance. So zooming away, this is what it looks like. It kicks up a small bit of smoke, and it's also greatly assisted by the exhaust blocks at the bank. But here we go, it looks like we are capping out at about 34 meters per second, which is very safe for a very complex design, using a lot of rotors and a lot of hinges. Anyway, slamming on the brakes. There we are, it's going to take quite some time to come to a stop. But then turning this thing around, what we do have on here is the script, so we can turn on the spot. There we are, so it's much like the design for the previous video. So we've got the tank script on here. Moving forwards and also turning at the same time. Here we go. It's a little bit odd. So compared to the previous video, this one is not as stable. It really wants to flip over. So you see that right there, we are lifting up a little bit on the left-hand side. And as we go faster, as we do a larger turn, it is going to become more apparent. So here we are at 34, turning around. And there we are, outside the slide round, and actually lose a bit of control. And there we go, we now just slid around there, damaged one of the blocks at the front there, not too sure why it actually damaged. I suppose we could take a gander underneath there, so putting on the brakes. There we go, lifting that up, popping out of here. What's going on down below this thing? And can't really see any damaged blocks. But no, that's why we can lift this all the way up, because if you did take some damage, now just go and weld it all up and put it back into working condition. Anyway, coming back into here. There we go, undoing the parking brakes. And I believe now it's time for me to try and find some enemies and actually start blasting them with this gun. And I know the perfect target for this, the Space Rock District Headquarters, where I'm going to finally actually probably disable this rocket terrors. So I have high hopes for this vehicle. And so here we are once again, right outside the Space Rock District Headquarters for another attempt at this thing. But luckily, because we're a tank, we're now going to sit outside the range and try and aim at them like so. Now I'm going to go into this view. Here we go, we're now going to aim right up here, shooting into that turret. Hopefully that will hit it. And, oh wow, did you see that just ricochet all the way away? I was not expecting that. Now we're going to aim a bit higher. And once again, it ricochets away, aiming even higher. And there we go, that was a nice hit onto that. One more time. All the way down, looks like they're both clustered together. And we just hit straight to the top of that. So we want to aim roughly over there. And there we go, that was a nice hit. That looks like it has been disabled, so finally the rocket launcher turret that's been disabling so many vehicles has been disabled. Now for its brother. So we want to turn this thing around. Here we go, we can aim up like that, firing it. And that was a nice hit into that. One more time should do. In fact, it looks like they were pretty damn damaged from a few videos ago, so it must have did some damage and saved the game after that. But no, up we go again. And it just goes and ricochets off into the distance. One more time. And there we are. That's now completely gone. Let's just go remove that for good measure. And there we are. That one is also gone. So you can just sit here outside the range and snipe them with the main cannon. And it should do a great job actually disabling the station if you're patient enough to actually go and do that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to aim straight towards them. That's actually a bloody good shot for me. But no, I'm now going to hop out of this. And now it's time for me to fly or drive all the way over to it and finish it off that way because there's nothing much else to talk about with this vehicle it's just a fantastic design a glorious design even with the sheer detail that's gone into this thing but no it's now time to actually go and ruin it by going blowing it up this way so here we come all the way towards it gonna do a moving shot into that how good was that and i missed it completely but no we're now gonna drive all the way up to it the turrets are active the turrets have been set up so one of them is targeting rockets which no longer needs to be done so over here find the auto cannon turrets there we go we actually go and turn this all on. There we go. I wanted to target weapons. And away we go. So idle movement is on. It's now spinning around. A bit more life has been added to this vehicle. But here we go. We're now approaching the engagement range. And now the auto cannon's done. The assault cannon is now going. And there we are. We see we've taken some shots at the front there. Taking some shots on our wheels. Circling around here. Into the main cannon. Looking around here. It's a little bit dodgy. Not too sure what's going on there. But the turret is spinning around out of control. Not too sure what is happening with it. But 
it looks like we are starting to actually disable that station. There we go, we now lost some of our armored panels on the gun itself. Feeling around even more, it's getting a bit confusing which way I'm driving now because it looks like we're supposed to be driving backwards. But no, it looks like we are actually properly disabling this pirate outpost or the headquarters even. And spinning around, it's actually quite difficult for the turrets to aim with the way the turret's spinning around. So let's go and lock that in place. That's a little bit better. Round once again. Oh god, not really sure what happened there. Flipped up randomly. And now we're driving backwards. So reline the camera. Back we go. And it looks like we are losing controls. Must have lost a programmable block to actually allow it to drive properly. But there we are. We're now sitting outside the range once again. We are getting a little bit of damage on the front there. But it's doing a great job of actually assaulting this base. But anyway, that's enough of me messing around with this vehicle. It did a great job of assaulting the space pirate destroyer headquarters. We still both the rocket turrets. But I'm going to save the game now to actually make sure that it's probably safe for future measures. So now I can bring back another vehicle and hopefully probably disable it. Or in the future video. Yes, it's a fantastic looking tank. It's got a fantastic utility with it. Fantastic different modes for you to play around with. And I just highly recommend downloading it and checking it out yourself. Once again, the tank track over the wheels mod is entirely optional. It's just a visual thing to add a bit more flair to your vehicles. And I highly recommend downloading it and checking out that. So there'll be a link to it description below if you wish to download and play around yourself. I highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.